I managed to install Home Assistant supervised on Debian Linux and everything is working flawlessly and it is officially supported. Home Assistant supervised is one of the four official ways to run Home Assistant and this installation method has everything including Home Assistant add-on store but it also has a strict requirements that needs to be followed if you wish to have a stable, future-proof and updatable system. I will share every step that I did so you can use that as a guide to quickly spin a new Home Assistant supervised for yourself. Now, let's see the requirements. From the hardware part, all you need is to have a computer capable of running Debian Linux. And this is one of the strict Home Assistant requirements. It cannot be anything else, it must be exactly Debian and derivates like Ubuntu, Raspberry Pi OS and a bunch of others simply doesn't count. Example of such hardware is any recent desktop or laptop, PC, Raspberry Pi, Nuke and a lot other. I used Zimaboard, which is a low-cost single board computer exclusively designed for makers. The best part is that this little guy have a fast eMMC storage and an Intel processor with virtualization support and it is just perfect for such a task. But more about Zimaboard later in this video because now I'm moving to the software requirements. The first one we mentioned already and that was Debian Linux OS. At the time of shooting this video the latest version is Debian 12 with codename Bookworm. And this is how I installed Debian on my Zimaboard computer on a fast pace. I downloaded the latest Debian image from get.debian.org website and I created an installation USB stick using a free tool called Raspberry Pi Imager, where Balena Etcher is another tool that can be used to accomplish the same. After that, I inserted one 16 GB USB stick in my laptop, then I selected the downloaded Debian image and I flash it on the USB stick, where the whole process took several minutes. After that, I inserted the USB stick in one of the USB ports of the Zima board computer and I also plugged a monitor and a keyboard so I can enter in the BIOS so I can configure the device to boot from the USB flash drive. I will not get into great details about the Debian installation process as it is nothing extraordinary. Most of the time I just used the default Debian options. I set and remembered well the root and regular user. user name and password. I used the entire Zimaboard eMMC storage for the Debian and I installed grub bootloader. I also enabled the SSH server so I will be able to connect to my device over the network from my laptop and to remove the connected monitor and keyboard when the installation is finished. Once I got inside Debian I updated and upgraded the operating system to the latest possible version using the standard apt commands. Don't try to remember them, just get them from the video description or from my written article. I'll switch the user to root and I'll use the password that I choose during the initial setup. And now I'll type apt update and I'll wait for this to finish. After that I'll type apt upgrade. That way I'll have the latest packages. Then I install the following software dependencies as per the Home Assistant instructions. This is step one, I should execute this as root. So I'll execute first su dash and I'll type my root password. And when I see this rooted Debian, everything is fine and this hashtag of course. And now I'll just copy these whole comments right here and I'll paste it in my terminal. Just like that. And I'll wait for this command to finish. After that, I installed Docker using this one line command. Let's try with step two of the Home Assistant supervised installation, which is to install Docker. I'll copy this Docker installation script, one liner, and I'll paste it in my terminal. And just like that docker installer is started on my system and will download docker and will install it for me and i just have to use it afterwards i hope okay i think docker is now installed the command ends with some warnings but just ignore them and i can proceed to the next step which is to install os agent it can be found here on this link these are the releases I should find, the latest one. And if you are doing this in the future, 
just get the latest OS agent version. This is for 64 bit and it is a Debian package. So I'll copy this link and I'll download it on my system using wget command. Like that, now my this package is downloaded on my home folder and I can install it using the following command D package minus E and then the name of the file. Let me double check if this is the correct way. Yes, it is. I'll click enter and OS agent is installed. I can now check if everything is fine by using this command with my OS agent. This command verifies that you successfully installed OS agent. I have some answer and this answer seems valid. This should not return an error. So this is not an error for me. This is some settings which is just fine. Next step for my Home Assistant supervised installation is step 4 which is to install Home Assistant supervised Debian package. I'll just copy this whole row and I'll paste it again in my terminal just like that. I'll hit enter and I'll wait for the installation to finish. The command finished with some terrifying error, but from what I managed to find and read over the internet, this error message is normal and expected. Go figure! And now, before we go to the final Home Assistant supervised step, I want to share a few words about the device that I'm using. The Zima board, which is the backbone of this project. Zima board is one very successful crowdfunded product on Kickstarter with the incredible 4,905% reached over the target with almost 2,000 bakers and 300k US dollars raised. To put this in other words, the user just loved this product and here is why. Zima board can run various of standard operating systems such as almost any Linux and attention here, Windows is also running perfectly. Software router OS like OpenVRT and PFSense are also supported. All kinds of media and web servers, even Android can be started. This single board computer beast comes in three modifications. Zima board 232, 432 and 832 with 2, 4 and 8 gigs of RAM. Also, the last two models have a better CPU with two more cores. All devices are having 32GB of fast eMMC storage and two SATA ports for additional HDD or SSD drives. One very attractive to me Zima board feature is that it has two LAN ports for all kinds of network redundancy. In other words, you can connect this device to two separate networks and if one goes down, the other will keep the device online. That is something that even the entry level servers don't have by default and you can get it from a device that fits in your palm. Zima board have two USB 3 ports and unfortunately a mini display port which I honestly don't like much because I had to buy an HDMI adapter and that cost me whole 5 euros more. But the next thing that Zima board have blew my mind as I haven't seen such thing in a single board computer so far. It is a PCIe slot on which, for example, I can insert a Google Coral TPU so I can run Frigate software and I can upgrade my home security cameras to the next level. And of course, and not only that is possible, but many more things as the PCIe slot opens up a lot of gates and possibilities. The Zima board is having a passive cooling, which means the device is completely silent. It weighs only 278 grams and attention here, it is powered by 12 volts DC. That means it is a great choice for camper, caravans, RVs and boat owners as well. Of course, you can use the device as a desktop computer as it is powerful enough for everyday tasks. And it even comes with pre-installed Casa OS, which is another Debian based Linux distribution that allows one click installation of multiple ready to use applications, including Home Assistant. But that is the container version which doesn't have Home Assistant at own store. If you want to join the owners club of this fun yet powerful mini computer, you can check the current prices of all three Zima board models from the links in the video description. Now, 
Back to the Home Assistant Supervised. After Home Assistant Supervised in store finished its job, meaning I saw the terrifying error that seems to be normal, I can try to open Home Assistant .local colon 8123 web address in my browser. Or if this doesn't work, I have to find the IP of the device where Home Assistant was installed. That was my Zima board. I have some warnings here, but let me try to open the IP of my Zima board, which is 185, and the default Home Assistant port, which is 8123. And I should be greeted by the Home Assistant welcome page, which usually is saying wait few minutes more for the Home Assistant installation to finish. But because I'm running this on the fast Zima board mini computer, I was ready in no time. And just like that, I have my Home Assistant welcome screen shown. And I can create my smart home by clicking on this button. I can restore from backup here. If I have a Home Assistant full backup, I can click on this and I can select my file and I'll restore my full Home Assistant snapshot. Then the last thing needed was to finish the Home Assistant onboarding process, which was like a walk in the park compared to the steps that I did so far. Let's try to create my smart home. I'm Kirill, nice to meet you. You can subscribe if you haven't done that already. I will use my own password here. And I'll create an account. I'll select a location. You can search for your location here. And you can select it. I'm on the next step now. Help us to help you share anonymized information. I'm fine with that and I'll enable everything so I can share my basic analytics, usage, statistical data and diagnosis with Home Assistant crew so they can share that data with vendors, creators and prove them that Home Assistant is actually used by a lot of people so they can create native Home Assistant integrations. If you're interested, you can open this link and you can read more about what's shared, what's not, where you can see the analytics and stuff like that. I'll just click next. And we found compatible devices. At this screen, you can only see a glimpse of what's auto-detected by Home Assistant. And you can configure these things later. I'll click finish and this is it. This is my home assistant. And let's try to find if everything is supported now. I can double check that everything is fine by opening the home assistant observer by typing the IP of my Zima board where home assistant is colon 4357 as a port. And as you can see, everything is green, connected, supported and healthy. Next thing that I want to check is in the Home Assistant menus. I'll go to the Settings, System, Repair, Overflow menu in the upper right, System Information. And here I want to see two things. The first one is this. Installation type is Home Assistant Supervised. That's what I'm talking about the whole video. And by the way, if you want to know more about the different official Home Assistant installation types, their pros and cons, and one stupid simple way to get started with Home Assistant on a PC in under five minutes, then register right now for my Home Assistant webinar at automatelike.pro slash webinar, where the webinar is absolutely free of charge. The second thing that I wanted to see in the same menu is down under Home Assistant Supervisor section. And here it is, supported is true. That means if I now have some strange problems with my Home Assistant, I can freely open an issue in GitHub, for example, or I can ask in the Home Assistant community for help. If I did the same steps on another not Debian Linux, for example, Ubuntu or Raspberry Pi OS, which are Debian based Linuxes, but they are not Debian exactly, most probably the whole thing would work after applying some workarounds, but the supported label would have a false value here instead. And if in such case I'm asking for help, the first answer would be go pre-install your Home Assistant on a supported OS, aka Debian, and come back again. So one small label but with big difference. Don't go to the unsupported rabbit hole as the things may work initially but after some time and after some updates they may suddenly stop and no one but you will be interested in investigation and fixing the issue. 
So go official and thank me later. If some of the terms that I'm using are not so clear for you, then download my smart home glossary from my website, automatelike pro slash glossary. I'm Kirill, subscribe for more videos and I'll post new one next week. Bye.